<clears throat> you know, I'm driving to, uh, well, from, I'm driving home from a, from a meeting, and I saw this point where I think somebody wasn't paying attention, and they, like, almost hit another car, and they braked in time and everything, but the fact is they didn't hit the other car. And it's really interesting when you look around <clears throat> and you see all the cars that are driving around, and there's really not that many accidents. I mean, I know there are a lot of accidents, but I mean, compared to how many people are on the road and, you know, if you were to compare the actual driving hours to how many accidents there are, it's actually pretty impressive that <coughs> as human beings, we're not, we're able to drive cars and not uh, run into each other all the time, even though we're not really coordinating. But what I was looking at was like the point of self-driving cars and how, you know, they're inevitable. They're, I mean, it's gonna happen. Tesla just said by 2020, they're gonna have like, I think it was like a million, what they call robo taxis, because basically all the Teslas they have on the road, people will have the option to, on their app, he said, add it to the, add their car to the fleet. So they'll either be able to summon their Tesla to come pick them up or add it to the fleet. In which case, someone else who has the Tesla app but doesn't own a Tesla can have a Tesla come pick them up and drive them somewhere, just like Uber. And obviously, if you don't own a Tesla, you probably pay for that. And uh, so it's inevitable. And they said their, their cars are already self-driving. Like, they can drive cross-country on their own. It's just a matter of deregulation. Or, I guess, regulation, depending on how you look at it. But then I was looking at, okay, would I, would I trust a self-driving car with, with my child's life? And on the one hand, I'm looking at it thinking, well, I mean, I don't, I trust myself to drive and I, I guess I trust everyone else because I'm driving around them. Would a, would a, would a machine do a better job? And I would think hypothetically, Theoretically, I suppose, yes, a machine could do a better job if it was programmed perfectly and, and, and uh, everything was considered. And if everything was coordinated, if the cars had fail-sick mechanisms where they all shut down or slowed down, um, what if they all had bumpers on them, you know, and like airbags on the outside and like people didn't care what their cars looked like so they could be made as safe as possible and they, all the cars talked to each other because they were on the same network, for example. And you, know, you can imagine a much different scenario being possible. But the question is, is that what's gonna happen? Because a company like Tesla, for example, although they may have really great technology, it's like they, and I'm not just singling out Tesla, any company in our current system, they can't really focus on what is the absolute best because they have to compete with other companies. So there's always that factor of having to consider what is gonna make them more competitive. And that may, in some cases, mean cutting costs and not doing what's best, but in some way compromising in order to beat the competition. And you see this all the time. And I, I think that is perhaps what's at play when you look at the vaccines and stuff. Um, I don't necessarily know for a fact that vaccination in itself is entirely a bad thing. I guess it depends on what viruses and disease really is, and, and I don't think that people, human beings, really understand what they are because we're we're not really understanding how physical reality works. We're just understanding how our minds work, and so everything we're doing is from the perspective of our mind. So we're not really even understanding how disease actually works in the body. But my point is, anything like pharmaceutical drugs, all those things, it's not that there's nothing of benefit to them, it's just that we're not really getting to know how the physical reality works because the companies are really just interested in making money. And so they have to compromise at some level. So if there was a system that took care of everyone's basic needs, so in other words, there was no reason to compete for survival. And, and I don't just mean basic needs as in just the basics of what you need, meaning like the bare minimum. I mean, 
if everyone had a life of a millionaire by current standards and that was always improving and everyone always had it equally so no matter what was come what came out that was improved the system was such that everybody would have it equally access to the best then competition wouldn't be what it is today which is like you're trying to destroy the other one the other company or whatever your competition would be more like okay let's see who can actually become the best and like and improve everything and within that it's okay if the other person gets creates the best thing even if you don't because it's more like you're taking different approaches to the same problem and within that seeing where that leads you and you know maybe there could be a healthy spirit of oh I want to be the first one but at the end of the day you don't actually care so it's more like I really just want to do what's best that doesn't work in this current system because in the current system if you take that approach you will be destroyed and you won't be able to survive and people would not invest in your company you know what I mean they, they wouldn't so in this current system you have to be the best and you have to destroy all the competition so you know just within that point you can really see that competition in itself competition per se is not what is best um, competition has a place in a system of equality but in itself it is not the mechanism which produces what is best because if that were the case it would have already done that there's only more separation there's only more uh, inequality more abuse that's occurring on a daily basis so competition in itself is not ever going to produce what is best we have to shift our starting point it's not about demonizing competition it's the self-interest, it's the focus on self-interest that's the problem. That is the issue. And so that focus on self-interest infects and pervades everything, including the principle of competition. Again, competition could be adjusted or could, could have a place in what is best in terms of improving the balance. But in terms of starting point, and so the problem is people will then say, oh, competition that's you know and they will use it to defend the current system to say it'll, it'll always we have the best possible world that we could possibly have there's nothing better and survival of the fittest and all of those points will take care of everything but the reality is like you don't apply that principle to your family survival of the fittest like no you take care of everyone equally if you had a child that was born with um, some kind of uh, genetic disorder where they were like their brain didn't function at, at the level that you know the average person's does and they were lower intelligence for example lower, lower learning capacity uh, you wouldn't just like be like oh sorry you gotta just be like everybody else like no you would you would adjust and you would give them the attention they require but we don't do that as a human race from the same perspective we don't look at okay some people in this world genetically are are superior in the context of competing and um, designing systems and controlling systems and things like that and they're not seeing it as their responsibility to support everyone else and as human beings we have a superior form in terms of ability to manipulate reality physically and we don't see it as our responsibility to take care of all of the plants and animals as having equal value to us instead we only see them as a means to an end to satisfy and pursue our self-interest as the pursuit of happiness, which is represented as the pursuit of profit in our current economic system. So competition only ever destroys in this current system because that is the starting point, is to consume, is to consume all of physicality just for a temporary experience of energy. And whether you realize it or not, we've been doing this for a long time and we have consumed entire planets. This is the only planet left. I mean, look at Mars, look how it looks. There used to be stuff there. And we're slowly but surely doing that to, the, to this planet and there's not gonna be anything left. And only then it's, we're gonna realize, is that really what we need? Or can we just like use common sense and wake up now and realize like, all the bullshit that you're participating with in your mind is not real. It's all been put there by marketing and advertising. Even spirituality is just a form of marketing. And 
it's all been put there and you've accepted it and you never questioned it. And it's really time that we start questioning things because if we don't, the thing is you might think that your life is okay now, but there will come a day where it's not. And if you think that, oh, well, I'll just get to the end of my life and I'll be fine. You think there's not a consequence for being in a position where you could stand up and you could support and you could create a world that's best for all and not doing it and using something like the afterlife as an excuse. You don't think there's a consequence for that because that's pretty fucking stupid. So yeah, just some points to consider today. Bye.